Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this lecture, students, we will discuss about the flower structure, function, and life cycle of angiosperm. Contents to be covered are the structure and function of flower, life cycle of angiosperm. I will uh, next discuss about the position of Vainoshim on Tenmuth, and I will uh, then end my presentation with um, pollination and its time. Okay, from this, a lecture student will understand the purpose of flower, its reproductive cycle, its different form, and will also know about the position of Vinoshim on Thelmus in relation to the other floral parts, and will also know about the uh, pollination and its different types. Okay, student, the main parts of flower are shown in this figure. A flower consists of male and female reproductive structure. They include the stamen, pistil, petal, and sepal. First, discuss about the stamen. Stamen is the male reproductive structure of flower. It consists of stalk called filament that ends in on anther. The anther contains pollen sac in which meiosis occur and pollen grain form. The next part is the pistil, which we also call carpal, is the female reproductive structure of flower. It consists of stigma, style, and ovary. The surface of stigma is sticky, which help it to catch the pollen. The style supports the stigma and connects uh, to the ovary the ovary hole the ovule uh, uh, squirrels which we also call the female gametophytes when the ovules are fertilized the ovules become the seed and the ovary becomes the fruit while petals uh, which we also call corolla attract the pollinators to the flower and they are often bright in color to attract the pollinators uh, next uh, part is uh, sepal mm, and the uh, sepal um, the basic function of sepal is to protect the developing flower while it is still in bud uh, sepals are usually green in color the callus and corolla or uh, sepals and petal together composed of perian the flower stem is referred to as a pedicel and the portion of the pedicel students that hold the flower in are called the receptacle. Uh, so we can also divide flower into essential and non-essential part. The essential parts of flower are those that are directly associated with the reproduction. For example, uh, stamen and carpal and non-essential parts are those which either protect the reproductive parts of flower or make the flower attractive. Uh, for um, pollination, for example, uh, petals and sepals. Plant scientists or botanists have been studying flower and plant life cycle for a very long time. And as a result, there are many terms to describe flower types. Flower may be complete or incomplete, perfect or imperfect. Plants may be classified as monoecious or dioecious. So, friends, let's discuss about the complete flower, a flower that develops all four set of floral organs, for example, sepal, petal, pistil, and stamen. An example include um, hibiscus, roses, uh, pea plant, and many more. Incomplete flowers are those that lay one or more of these sets, for example, stamens or carpal. Uh, example of incomplete flower are squash plant. If you closely examine the bright yellow uh, flower of squash plant uh, in the figure, uh, you will uh, notice uh, some of uh, flower have stamens but no pistil and other have pistil but no stamens. Uh, perfect flowers are those um, that contain stamens and pistil uh, together and these flowers are also called as the bisexual flower and all complete flowers are also perfect flower example of perfect flower are uh, sunflower roses lily tulip green and pea okay regarding imperfect flower a flower that is missing male and female parts is called imperfect flower unisexual flower are either staminate or pistillate and are said to be imperfect flower Remember students, imperfect flower are always incomplete, for example, corn, squash, watermelon, and coconut, etc. So, a unisexual flowers are either staminate or pistillate. Pistillate flowers are those that lay stamen, means a male part, is called pistillated or female flower. And staminate flowers are those that lay pistil, 
is uh, said to be a seminate. Example are squashes, uh, asparagus, cucumber, squash, eggplant, and corn. Uh, students, if you look at the picture, you will see the corn plant. Um, the corn is the miniature ear that is born on the leaf axil, which uh, we call as a pistillate flower or female flower, and the silk born at the tip of these pistillate flower are called style and the corn tassel which arises at the apical part of the plant shoots uh, contains stamens uh, flower or male part so uh, to sum it up there are three distinct individual flower types uh, uh, pistillate means female flower uh, seminate means male flower and perfect contain both uh, pistil and stamens Okay, uh, plants may be classified as monoecious or dioecious. Monoecious plant bear unisexual flower or both sexes or sporins. They member plants have male and female flower on one plant but on two different branches. Okay, example are cucumber, oak, and corn. Whereas uh, in case of dioecious plants, male and female flowers are on a separate plants. Example include papaya, cottonwood, willow, and mulberry. Uh, while in case of hermaphrodite, uh, as shown in the lower right figure, uh, those plants uh, which contain both endosium and gynosium world or part in the same flower also called as a bisexual or perfect uh, flower. Uh, okay, students, remember these rules of thumb. All complete flowers are perfect because they necessarily have both the stamen and pistil. For example, uh, hibiscus, roses, etc. But not all incomplete flowers are imperfect because both the semen and pistil may be present. And what makes the flower incomplete is the absence of either sepal or pistil or both. Example are the flower of rice. The rice is incomplete because there are no sepal and petal. But it is perfect, remember with both semen and pistil. All imperfect flowers are incomplete because either the pistil or stamen is lacking. For example, the staminate and pistillate flower of squash. But remember students, not all perfect flowers are complete because even though both stamen and pistil are present, the flower is incomplete due to the absence of either or both sepal and petal okay okay students uh, let's discuss about the angiosperm life cycle in angiosperm the sporophyte is the dominant generation you know that the large plant that we see is the sporophyte okay the gametophytes are reduced in size and depend on the sporophyte for nutrients. The angiosperm life cycle is characterized by three F remember students that is flower, double fertilization and fruits are the unique feature of the angiosperm life cycle. The dominant plant as you can see at the upper left side is the diploid sporophyte whose flower normally produce both the male and female gametophytes. Male gametophytes for example, uh, called pollen grains are produced within, uh, within the anther, remember, where diploid spores forming cells undergo meiosis, producing haploid spore cells. The spores divide mitotically to produce pollen in which two sperms are formed. Remember, students, the female gametophyte develops with the ovule of the ovary. Their uh, diploid spores forming cells undergo meiosis, producing haploid spore cells. Then the spores divide mitotically to produce the female gametophytes, whose contents include one egg cell. So, fertilization occurs when pollen land on stigma. Students, in coming slide, I will explain in detail about the double fertilization. After landing on the stigma, a pollen grain produces a pollen tube that burrows down to the ovary and into the female gametophyte or there it releases its sperm. One sperm student remember fused with the egg to form a zygote 
and the second eventually form a source of food for the developing embryo. The ovules give rise to the seed which contains the endosperm and the embryo that develops from the zygote. Then the seed is dispersed, germinate and develop into mature spore white. And in this way the cycle repeats. Okay students, uh, this figure shows the development of male and female gametophytes in it. And just from, let's discuss these gametophytes in detail. Okay, the male gametophytes begin its development within the sporangia means the pollen sac of the anther. Students, and there are microsporocytes, each of which will form four haploid microspores through meiosis. Each microspores then eventually give rise to haploid male gametophytes. A microspores divides once by mitosis and produces a generative cells and cube cells. Then the generative cells will eventually form sperm, means male gametophytes. The cube cells enclosing the generative cells produced by the pollen tube, which derives sperms to the egg. Students, if you look at the pollen grain, it is actually enclosed in a thick and resistant wall. Firstly, pollen grain is an immature gametophyte. A pollen grain becomes a mature gametophyte when the generative cells divides by mitosis to form two sperm cells. The female gametophytes contain ovules, each ovule containing a single sporangium. One cell in the sporangium of each ovule, which is also called megasporocytes, grows and then goes through meiosis, producing four haploid megaspores. Students in many angiosperms, only one megaspore survives. Okay, these megaspores then divide by mitosis three times, resulting in one cell with eight haploids. A membrane partition divides the mass into multicellular female gametophyte, which is also called the egg sac. At one end of the egg sac, two synergian cells are present. The synergians function in the attraction and guidance of the pollen tube. At the other end of the egg sac, there are three antiporal cells helping in the growth and development of endosperm. The two color nuclei share the cytoplasm of the large central cells of the embryo sac. The ovules now consist of the embryo sac and the surrounding are intergaments. 